The disappearance of the submersible, attempting to reach the wreck of the Titanic, led to a series of terrifying scenarios for the rescuers. They were confronted with the possibility that the five people on board could be trapped at the bottom of the ocean, with a dwindling oxygen supply, or that a catastrophic accident had occurred, leaving no chance for survival. After days of desperate searching, the US Coast Guard in Boston held a press conference confirming the tragic reality. Multiple debris pieces found on the ocean floor indicated that the sub had imploded, resulting in the loss of all lives on board. As investigators try to determine what went wrong, many are questioning why the vessel, known as the Titan, was in that location in the first place. Reports suggest that the company operating the experimental sub had been warned about safety concerns, but still proceeded to take passengers to the depths of the North Atlantic. The sinking of the Titanic over a century ago served as a wake-up call for the maritime sector, raising the question of whether lessons will be learned following this latest tragedy. The Titan lost contact with its mothership, the Polar Prince, one hour and 45 minutes into its dive on June 18. However, it took eight hours before the United States Coast Guard was alerted to its disappearance for reasons that remain unexplained. An international search operation was swiftly initiated, with US and Canadian aircraft deployed to scour the area from the air and drop sonar buoys into the waters below. Rescuers faced extraordinary challenges from the outset, as the Titanic wreck is located in a remote part of the ocean, hundreds of kilometers away from the coasts of the US and Canada, and nearly four kilometers beneath the surface. The harsh conditions at the wreck site pose significant obstacles. First of all, it's freezing cold. Secondly, it's pitch black. The pressure is 380 times what we feel here. It's an Empire State Building of lead sitting on top of you. Remotely operated vehicles, ROVs equipped with cameras, became a priority to provide visibility to the surface crews, allowing them to explore deep into the ocean. Amidst the search, there was a glimmer of hope when underwater noises were detected in the search area, leading to speculation of possible survivors. However, the Coast Guard later clarified that the noises were unrelated to the sub. A top-secret military system reportedly detected a potential implosion shortly after the sub's disappearance. Experts believe that if an implosion did occur, the crew would have been unaware of the events transpiring, resulting in their immediate demise. While debates on social media focused on the actions of the super-rich, the loved ones of the five individuals on board the submersible lived through unimaginable horror during the week leading up to the confirmation of their fate. Among the passengers was the CEO of OceanGate, Stockton Rush, who charged his four passengers a substantial fee for the deep sea adventure. Concerns were raised about the willingness of some participants, such as Suleiman, the 19-year-old son of businessman Shahzada Dawood, who felt terrified about the trip but wanted to please his father. Other passengers included a former French Navy diver known as Mr. Titanic, a British adventurer with multiple world records, and a Dubai-based private jet dealer, a 58-year-old British adventurer Hamish Harding, a renowned figure in the exploration world. Harding, who ran a Dubai-based private jet dealership, had accomplished extraordinary feats in his lifetime. He had trekked to the South Pole multiple times and held three Guinness World Records, one of which was for spending the longest time at the deepest part of the ocean. Despite his remarkable achievements, Harding was well aware of the risks associated with his journey to the bottom of the Mariana Trench in 2021. He acknowledged that there was no other sub capable of rescuing them in case of an emergency, emphasizing the potentially fatal consequences if something went wrong. Janicki Mickelson, a close friend of Harding's, expressed her frustration at how the mission was being perceived solely as a sightseeing trip for a UK billionaire to the Titanic. She emphasized that expeditions of this nature 
also serve scientific research purposes. Mickelson recognized the high costs involved in such ventures and the need for individuals like Harding, who possess both the financial means to sponsor the expeditions and the willingness to take risks due to their expertise. She believed that these exclusive expeditions cater to the desires of the ultra-rich who seek unique and unforgettable experiences. The allure of the Titanic persists even a century after its tragic sinking. The luxury liner's story continues to captivate the public's imagination, inspiring numerous works of literature, film, and documentaries. However, gaining access to the wreckage site requires a combination of significant wealth, a willingness to take risks and special privileges. OceanGate, the company conducting deep-sea tours to the Titanic ruins, offers an extreme form of tourism that appeals to a select few. Their eight-day, once-in-a-lifetime experience is designed to provide exclusivity to clients seeking an extraordinary adventure. It is estimated that fewer than 200 people have personally witnessed the wreck, a significantly smaller number compared to those who have traveled to space or climbed Mount Everest. The ultra-rich, driven by their thirst for unique experiences, spare no expense in pursuit of these remarkable opportunities. While shipwreck tourism has its enthusiasts, it also faces criticism. Concerns have been raised about the impact of human activity on the Titanic wreckage. Critics argue that the site should be treated as a maritime memorial and left undisturbed. Scientists have cautioned that excessive visitation could harm the wreck, leading to its deterioration over time. Previous expeditions to the site have revealed evidence of pollution, such as discarded bottles and cargo nets, raising further concerns about the preservation of the historical site. The safety of the Titan, the submersible used in the ill-fated expedition, had previously been a subject of discussion. Journalist David Pogue, who documented his trip on the sub, highlighted safety precautions and signed a waiver acknowledging the potential risks involved. Reports emerged about past safety concerns and legal disputes involving OceanGate, including questions regarding testing and the lack of classification or certification for the Titan. The tragedy surrounding the ill-fated expedition to the Titanic wreckage has raised questions about the safety and regulations surrounding submersible vessels in the United States, major marine operators typically require chartered vessels to be classified by independent organizations like the American Bureau of Shipping, a BSA. However, OceanGate, in a blog post from 2019, stated that their innovative approach often falls outside the existing industry paradigm, suggesting a deviation from traditional classification standards Retired U.S. Navy Captain Alfred McLaren, a friend of Mr. Nargelet, pointed out the use of carbon fiber and titanium in the sub's hull, materials that respond differently to temperature and pressure. He emphasized that the combination of these materials and the cycling of the submersible in salt water could lead to catastrophic failures. The irony of the situation lies in the fact that just two years after the Titanic sank in 1912, major shipping nations collaborated to revamp maritime safety regulations, known as the Safety of Life at Sea SOLAS, Convention. These regulations mandated the inclusion of lifeboats, rescue equipment, and 24-hour radio communication to prevent a similar disaster. Former merchant mariner Sal Mercogliano highlighted the potential for modern amendments to the SOLAS Convention, specifically addressing the operation of submersibles in international waters. While many countries have regulations in place for their coastal areas, the niche market of submersible exploration lacks comprehensive international rules and oversight. Critics within the industry 
have harshly criticized Ocean Gate's approach, with renowned filmmaker and deep sea explorer James Cameron leading the charge. Cameron argued that the design of the Titan, particularly the use of carbon fiber composites for its hull, was fundamentally flawed. He explained that with each pressure cycle experienced by the submersible, progressive damage could occur, even if there were successful dives initially. Cameron deemed it unconscionable to allow passengers on the Titan without proper certification. Drawing an ironic parallel, he likened the Titanic sinking to the captain's disregard for warnings, emphasizing the importance of thorough safety measures. Cameron also expressed skepticism regarding the response to the sub's disappearance, believing from the outset that the Titan had experienced a catastrophic failure. The incident has sparked discussions within the exploration community with individuals like Richard Weiss, a friend of Hamish Harding, expressing the community's commitment to learning from the tragedy. The hope is that this incident will prompt a review of practices and regulations to enhance safety measures for future deep sea explorations. The saying in the maritime industry that all rules and regulations are written in blood emphasizes the unfortunate reality that accidents often drive the need for stricter regulations. The aftermath of the Titan's demise may lead to new amendments and increased attention to submersible operations in international waters. What do you think about it? Please comment below and let us know about your opinion. Subscribe to our channel to get the latest news and mysterious things that are happening every day. Until then, stay safe.